The Airport Island, the story of Osaka Kansai International Airport. Osaka Kansai Airport is located on an artificial island in Osaka Bay and opened in 1994 and was expanded in 2007. As you can imagine, construction was no easy task. Two mountains were flattened to build the island, and according to the Institution of Civil Engineers at the time of its completion, it was the most expensive civil engineering project to date. Despite some incredible engineering successes and proven ability to withstand earthquakes and typhoons, issues are now appearing. Notably, the island is sinking faster than expected, leading to increasing problems with flooding. Let's take a look at the background, construction, operation and plans for this unique airport. In the 1960s and 70s, some key events led to the construction of the airport. Firstly, Osaka and Kobe were losing trade and business to Tokyo. Tokyo's second airport, Narita, was proposed as early as 1966 and opened in 1978. Many exporters had to ship cargo to Tokyo rather than use the local airport. Secondly, the existing airport, Itami, was starting to prove inadequate. Located in a densely populated suburb of Osaka, Itami opened in 1939 for military use. It was later converted for civilian use and expanded from 1959 and soon welcomed international airlines. Aviation, of course, has expanded significantly since then, and the airport has not been able to accommodate the demand. With the urban area around it, there was no room for expansion. Problems with noise and local objection did not help either. By the 1970s, it was already reaching capacity, and it was clear a new airport location was needed. The initial plan was to build a new airport close to Kobe. This could serve both cities easily with fast transport links. The city of Kobe, however, rejected these plans, and airport planners were forced to look at other locations. Learning from the problems faced at Itami, planners wanted a location away from built-up areas, allowing for large-scale construction and 24-hour operation. Following consideration of six offshore sites by the Ministry of Transportation, a proposal was made to construct an artificial island in Osaka Bay to the south of the city. This would be four kilometers long, two and a half kilometers wide, and be situated five kilometers offshore. The airport would require extensive, sophisticated engineering both for its construction and ensuring resistance to flooding, typhoons, and earthquakes. Approval was granted, and construction of the island began in 1987. The popularity of land reclamation picked up across Japan after the end of the Second World War, with the country's rapid economic growth seeing a massive demand for new land. Real estate company Japan Property Central estimates that 0.5% of all land in Japan today is reclaimed. The first task when the project began in 1987 was building the island. This took over three years and required the flattening of two local mountains. The airport is in fact made up of two islands, each ultimately supporting one runway and terminal. The first island was completed in 1994, while the second would not be completed until 2007. Island 1 is slightly smaller at 511 hectares, while Island 2 is 535 hectares. Although stabilized, the ground and the airport sitting on top would sink further. Several experts estimated the ground could sink 19 to 25 feet. As such, engineers built according to the lower estimates. It turned out this was not the best strategy. After stabilizing the ground, the next step was to construct a sea wall and fill the reclamation site. The airport perimeter was set out using 69 large steel chambers. The spaces between the chambers were filled with 48,000 tetrapods. These are specially designed concrete structures used to protect the island from waves and surges by dissipating the oncoming water. The central island space was then filled with 430 million cubic meters of rock taken from three mountain sites between 10 and 30 kilometers inland from the bay. The Journal of Geotechnical and Geoenvironmental Engineering reports that the final heights chosen were 36.7 meters above the sea floor for Island 1 and 40 to 43 meters for Island 2. Construction of the airport facilities and terminal on Island 1 began in 1991, with one runway and terminal initially built. Italian architect Renzo Piano designed the main terminal building. Other projects designed by Piano include the Pompidou Center in Paris, Potsdamer Platz in Berlin, and the Shard in London. 
Island One's terminal is an impressive 1.7 kilometers in length, making it the longest terminal in the world. Adjustable columns support the terminals. These are designed to compensate for the continued sinking of the island and can be extended by inserting metal plates at the base of the columns. The terminal roof is shaped like an aerofoil. This is not just an excellent aviation reference, it's designed to promote airflow. As if the island and airport construction was not enough, a connection to the mainland was also needed. A 3.75-kilometer bridge was built connecting to the mainland at Rinku Town, itself a development built on reclaimed land in the 1990s. This is a double-decked bridge carrying six lanes of traffic with two rail lines below. Construction started in 1987 and it was completed by 1994. Authorities were keen to avoid the problems with protests and disruptions seen in Tokyo. While they were mostly successful, there was some interference from the local fishing industry, which would be disrupted post-construction. This was settled when a payment offer was accepted. There were also protests at quarry sites with around 24 acts of resistance taking place. Work on the second terminal and runway began in 2003. This late start was to monitor the sinking of the islands. The second runway opened in August 2009 and is longer than the first runway, 4,000 meters compared with 3,500 meters. Terminal 2 opened in 2012 and was a more straightforward construction and design than Terminal 1. It's a smaller single-story structure with no jet bridges. It was designed specifically for low-cost carriers and offered lower landing fees. Since the first runway and terminal opened, additions to the seawall have been made. When it was realized that the airport was sinking faster than initially predicted, the seawall was raised at the cost of $150 million. Plans have been developed for further expansion, including a third runway and a new cargo terminal. As of 2020, however, these are on hold. The airport opened on September 4, 1994 and has since become the main base for all international flights. Itami Airport now handles only domestic flights. The early operation of Kansai was hindered by high prices. According to reporting by the New York Times in 1993, the government had to raise rents and landing fees to cover some of the $14 billion construction cost. These fees were the highest of any airport in the world. For example, landing fees for a Boeing 747 were set at $10,000, compared to just $2,500 at JFK Airport in New York and $8,500 at Tokyo Narita Airport. As of 2019, Kansai Airport was the third busiest in Japan, handling 28.8 million passengers. While it may not be the busiest airport, it is popular. It was placed 10th most popular global airport in the Skytrax World Airport Awards in 2020 and second most popular in its medium-sized category. It also picked up an award for best airport staff and best baggage delivery globally. If you're liking this video so far, why not click subscribe and hit the like button? Oh, and be sure to click that notification bell too. The airport has already survived a lot in terms of natural disasters. The airport handled the Kobe earthquake in January 1995 quite well, despite extensive damage to buildings at a similar distance. This success is attributed to the use of sliding joints in all airport building construction. It has also coped well with several typhoons over the years, including an extreme one in 1998 with winds of over 210 km per hour. Unfortunately, a typhoon in 2018, the strongest typhoon to hit Japan since 1993, caused extensive damage across the Kansai region. Runways were flooded while a tanker damaged the bridge. Full operations at the airport did not start again for nearly a month. This has reignited discussion of the problems with the airport and how it has been sinking. Since the time of its conception, the issue of the further sinking of Kansai Airport has been a major one. Its foundations are on a thick layer of clay and predictions vary regarding how much it will sink. According to the Institution of Civil Engineers, the airport sink rate fell from 50 centimeters a year in 1994 to 7 centimeters a year in 2008. The study in the Journal of Geotechnical and Geoenvironmental Engineering in 2015 shows that the two islands will reach sea level in the next 40 to 60 years. The problem is due simply to a difference between the planning engineer's estimates and the sinking rate that has occurred in reality. A further concern is the unequal sinking at different parts of the airport. 
At the center of the main terminal on the first island, for example, a higher sinking rate is being measured than at the ends of the building. Previously, this was experienced at other locations. To prevent damage or cracking, the airport runways were repaved with asphalt rather than concrete. Of course, the actual rate of further sinking may turn out to be different from what is estimated now, just as the original estimate did. The risk with further sinking is that as it approaches sea level, any storms or typhoons are more likely to cause water to break over the sea wall and engulf the airport. There's little that can be done to change this fundamentally, but the construction does allow for some minimizing of damage and disruption. One option is to raise the sea wall further. This has been done once at significant expense, and there are plans to raise it further. According to the Straits Times, a three-year project began in 2019 to further raise the sea walls. Additionally, the runways will also be raised by one meter by increasing the layers of asphalt. The newspaper notes that the equivalent of $510 million is currently set aside for disaster prevention measures, but this may increase as part of this project. The other protection is the ability to raise the buildings. As noted before, foundation columns can be adjusted by inserting metal plates to offset the sinking. This already takes place every two years, with each of the columns checked and adjusted as necessary. Kansai International Airport is as impressive as it is expensive. The airport is an engineering marvel and successfully serves the Kansai region of Japan, including the major Japanese city of Osaka. Hopefully, it'll continue to do so in the decades to come. Do you think Kansai International Airport and its construction on an artificial island was a good idea? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.